Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope everyone's doing well. Today's video is going to be a mix-up of things that I'm doing or showing or whatnot. So stay tuned. So I got an email basically asking me, you know, what the hell is behind me when I'm doing my videos? Well, that is a garbage can. That's where I throw away a bunch of crap. Uh, that is a shredder. Those are some unboxing stuff that I need to do. And this right here is something that I've had for years, but really didn't use it too much and kind of put it away underneath the stairs in the storage area of the basement and really didn't think about, well, hmm. I can use that for storing parts. All right, so let's start off at the top over here. The guitar that I ordered, the custom Les Paul with the dragon inlays, that's on its way. That should be here sometime around uh, in the middle of May or something. And these are basically the parts for that. I got some Grover tuners, got the pickups for it, got the F spacing pickup just in case that doesn't work out. I have you know a set matching set for the neck and bridge got some batteries inside here some triple a's and got some nine volts you know nine volts would be for uh active pickups act active equalizers um and pedals so this thing is kind of nice i've had this thing for quite a while i mean long long while and it was stored in the basement underneath the stairs and it had a bunch of different types of screws inside of it that I collected and, and stored for the years and never used them. That's why I just ended up being stored underneath the stairs because nobody was using it and it was in the way. But this is nice. It's two pieces. It's got a handle on it. You can carry this thing with you wherever you want if you're doing something on a job or whatever. These windows here are locked. There's a lock on the side and there's dividers inside here. So if you ever tip this thing over, nothing's going to go from one into another and mix your parts up. It's kind of nice. So this has a little lock on it. You turn it and you can pull your drawers out. Now, this drawer here has got all five-way switches. I got to get some three-way switches inside of here. It's got some toggle switches inside of here. And it also has all of my capacitors for tone controls over here it's all brand new bone nuts in packages i got uh tusk nuts white and black and then i have some blank nuts on the bottom over here this one here is all bridge parts well not bridge parts it's actually just bridges so i got a bunch of roller bridges on the bottom in packages this is a brand new strat uh, uh strat style bridge and then i got another one that's uh got a roller it's a roller bridge but for strats, kind of like the same one that I put on the, um, that, uh, well, I thought was a PV until I looked it up, the serial number, but it actually was a Yamaha guitar. This one here has got a bunch of pickup or mounting rings inside there. I got black, got cream, I got metal. There's packages down here for Ibanez's uh, guitars. Inside of here, I've got black screws for um pick arts i got chrome and gold i have string trees here i ordered a bunch of roller string trees so i got quite a few of those inside here um i've got some loose i can never remember what these are called but if you're doing a string through body you'll put this on the other side of the body and the ball sits inside there's i got these and i got some brand new ones here these are for the top of the body, and these are for the bottom of the body. This drawer here, I have basically a bunch of, I got white and gold, uh, white and black, and I think I got black inside of here with the white or chrome silver writing on it. But these are Strat style knobs. This one here could be either for Gibson or be for Ibanez. I got a few of those inside of here. Um, let's see. Strap locks, got a bunch of different strap locks in here. These are uh, Epiphone strap locks. Then I've got actual shallower. I don't buy the cheap ones. These are actual shallower strap locks. And then I got a bunch of, ah, I get one. 
different types of screws that are a little bit longer. I just dropped something. And then I have neck screws, black and silver. And I said screw. I dropped that too. I said screw, not bolt. Lock this one up. This one over here. Brand new CTS pots. I have minis. And then I have the larger ones. And then I have down there are the, uh, there's no neural on the shaft. They're smooth shaft. Brand new. Uh, 500 K's. I need to get to some 250 K's. Got some CTS push and pull pots over here. Some miscellaneous stuff. I've got some out brand new output jacks inside here. I've got some just some miscellaneous parts that uh, you know I can use for other guitars in, in case something's bad or whatever. A couple of three way switches in here for uh, basically uh, that's Paul. Inside here, got some more push and pull pots. These are also 500 K. I kind of like the 500 K a little bit better than the 250s. So I'm gonna lock that down. Open this one up. This one here has got more bridge parts in there. I have some brand new uh, base tuners. These are Godos. They're kind of nice. I've got some other tuners that uh, you know they're still usable. They're not bad. Um, whammy bars for strat and locking. Some loose roller bridges inside here. Floyd Rose parts. Uh, these are kind of nice to have. If you ever ever get a guitar that has a tuner that um, feels a little weird when you turn the key on there, look in between the key and the body of the tuner, and you might see that there's a missing ring in there. It could be black, it could be white. The metal ones are uh, basically like a spring, like that one right there. It's kind of a it's spring to where it's bent funny, all right? And that's what they do is they kind of put tension up against the plastic ones so when you turn the outside screw that's on your key to tighten them up to get them a little bit more firmer of a turn um sometimes these these white rings they break so i have a bunch of these spare ones just in case you know you never know if you get a used guitar and it's missing one well i got one that uh i can use and i have some springs inside here for some for some floyd roses and stuff i got a bunch of just different, different parts inside here. So yeah, that's uh, that's what's inside this box, and that's what I'm using it for. Eventually, when I get more parts, I'll be util utilizing the bottom one here. Like I said, this is just basically has a bunch of loose screws, different uh, sizes, different shapes. None of them which can be used for guitar because they're just not for it. All right, so that's my story. I'm sticking. So this is what I was using for storing my parts. Now it's basically just miscellaneous stuff. I got some screws. Got some nuts for uh, you know output jacks and nuts for uh, volume and tone controls inside here. Springs for pickups. Uh, you know, just a bunch of different crap inside here that uh, you know I just accumulated down here. I've got some old pickups that are epiphones down here they're really not anything special uh some tunematic bridge parts you know nothing nothing fancy some locking locking nuts a bunch of different ones inside here uh and then i keep like all of my like i have a, a bunch of open packs of strings here you know sometimes you break one all you need is one string and you end up with five other strings left in a pack and then I got some other parts in here, like a roller bridge. Uh, Three-way switches that are connected. Now, this is part of the system for the Epiphone. These came off of the... Uh, oh, boy. What was that? Joe Pask guitar. And I ended up doing some mods on it. So I saved them. They're not bad pickups. They're not bad. And just all kinds of, you know, I got black. I got chrome. I got... Uh, uh, what do they call that? Cosmo Black. Some extra springs that are loose inside here. Actually, a lot of extra springs. I got some saddles that are inside here that are still good. These, there's nothing wrong with these guys here. Um, 
other than they're missing the block and the screw that goes in the back, but they're probably in here too. Yeah, they're in here. See, here's one that screws right down. The blocks are probably in there too. So I got a bunch of different parts here that uh, can be reused if needed. And what is this? Oh, some more screws. That should go up here. Yeah. So this here, if you ever wanted to know what uh, I was using a long time ago, was a system called Stop Spring. And what this is, is just a piece of foam that you slide inside of your springs on your uh, either a Floyd Rose or some type of tremolo. And it's supposed to stop the noise. It does. It helps out a lot. But uh, they give you, like, not enough like you say, if you're going to use all the springs, they don't give you enough. But if you're using three springs, you have, end up having one extra. I'm not a professional. I never have claimed to be. But I simply do these videos to show if you have the determination and you're willing to possibly ruin something to get the experience to learn how to do stuff, do it. Yeah. This is a little rough, but again, as anyone knows, I do have the ability to clean these up, or clean instruments up, uh, despite what some mentally unstable individuals think about my uh, ability to work on instruments. All right, so I know what you guys are saying. Not again. Leave the poor bastard alone. You know? Everybody knows that something is wrong up here. Well, I got to hand it to them. At least a little bit of credit. All right. At least he's trying to show you what he's accomplished. Being wrong or right. Now, for me, if I was going to take on something that I was going to relic and it was just relic to wrong, I'd be kind of embarrassed to show you. But he's proud of his work. All right. He's the only one that's proud of his work, but he's proud of, proud of his work. There's three great Gibsons that I know of and a Ibanez that he took on and relict all of them. The Ibanez had a small chip in it. The SG, the last one, had a small chip on it before he ruined the headstock and really did a crappy job as far as relicking it the way he did. All the parts that of the body that he relicked were not parts of a relic or a um, an area that would get worn out, per se. Um, another SG, there was nothing wrong with that. And a flying V, which were all Gibsons, by the way. Okay, and this is from someone who has said in one of his videos... I've never had a brand name guitar. There's a reason for that. So, in this video, he's telling you that uh, it's okay to destroy your musical instrument. All right, musical instrument is a tool. Either you're a hobbyist, or you are a professional guitar player. You know, and it's used as your main tool for either enjoyment or income. All right. He's telling you it's okay for you to ruin your guitar, all right? which I don't agree with. For say somebody buys himself a used Les Paul Gibson guitar and decides he's going to, say, do his own setup on it. All right? It's okay to, to learn. There's nothing wrong with that. If you are mechanically able to work on something, you know measurements, uh, you know the meaning of action height, you know the meaning of action height at the first fret, at the nut, you know the meaning of, you know, radius. There's a bunch of different stuff that come into play to make a guitar a playable tool. And they all have to work together. By yourself, and this is where he forgets to say, if you want to do something like this and you want to try to take on a project that you're not sure of, look at the information that you could possibly find first. Don't buy anything expensive. Find a $25 guitar at a yard sale. Find a less than $100 guitar at a pawn shop if you're going to take on something like this. Either a refinishing, uh, fret leveling, crowning, polishing um 
replacing a neck, you know, anything, doing any like electronics on there, doing a setup. Practice on a cheap guitar first before you get into it. If you are mechanically inclined, you may end up, you know, with no troubles. If you're not mechanically inclined and you're not sure of measurements and you're not sure of how things work and you get kind of confused, which it does happen to people, and uh, it doesn't just play right or something, well, you can figure out what you did wrong and fix it. Don't follow what this guy is telling you, okay? All the guitars that he's had, which he says he's never had a brand name guitar, the brand name guitars that he's had, he's actually ruined and then traded off onto somebody else. One of the uh, SGs that he had, the guy wanted his money back. And I think he wanted his, did he want his guitar back too? I'm not sure if he wanted his guitar back, but the guy wanted his money back. And it wasn't, it wasn't a trade. So obviously that person knew about guitars and saw or somebody told him about that SG. And now the guy wanted his trade or money back. So be careful who you take information from. Be careful who you are watching to try to learn how to do something. Please. And by the way, never take any information from somebody who says it's okay to ruin something. That just shows that that person really doesn't take pride in what he's doing and how he's doing it. More like, if it's half-assed, oh well. Don't think like that. <laughs>just got done scraping out the fret slots um, they didn't use any glue or anything when they put these in you could kind of tell by what didn't come out of the fret slots after I cleaned them out and the one thing I got to do with this is I noticed on certain woods this one being one of them the uh, maple fretboard is another one because that's the only one that I've ever done where I pulled the frets out of it just to see how the tools work. But this one did it too. And what happens is as you pull the fret out, the edge of the wood kind of goes up a little bit. So there's a little bit of a burr on each side. I mean, there was no chipping on this thing whatsoever. It worked out really, really nice. But there's still a little burr. So anytime you pull pluck frets, now I don't know if Rosewood does the same thing or not, but... You get that burr. If you try to put frets on top of that burr, well, the frets are not going to sit flush right on top of the neck the way it's supposed to. There might be a little bit of a gap because of this burr over here. So I've got a 12-inch radius block coming. It's one of the ones I don't have. Go figure. And uh, with some 320-grit sandpaper, I'm going to knock this down. Now, the neck or at least the fretboard of the neck, 
is not going to get finished. Okay, at least it's not going to get a, a die to it. I'm going to leave this natural. I thought about it and um, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like as far as with these inlays on the neck, but here's my idea. And I know some of you guys may like it, some of you guys may not like it. The headstock and the body and the back of the neck are all going to get dyed. And what I'm going to end up doing is going to be kind of uh, a lot different than what I've normally done in the past. Now I've dyed, I've used fluorescence uh, colors, uh, got the black light effect, um, did a whole neck inlay, the Trio Life carved it out and basically filled it with a fluorescent green epoxy and uh, it worked out really nice and, and came out pretty cool under the black light and stuff. So this one here I got plans. So I ordered some acrylic leather paint. You see it says neon. These guys make uh, great leather dyes that can be used for, <clears throat> excuse me, staining or dyeing your guitar. And uh, they work out really great. So this one here, I got two oranges to choose from, either a lava, a lava orange or a flaming orange, which this is lighter, this is a little bit darker. Now this stuff is the consistency of water. It's very, very like like thin. And it is water-based acrylic. So easy cleanup. And I think I can get away with how I want to do this. So we'll see. I have some powder dyes that are coming in. Uh, I've used this stuff before. I did my Les Paul, the red Les Paul burst with it, and it came out really nice and worked out really good. So I'm kind of used to more of how that stuff works rather than this paint here. All right, so right here, got some orange, well, orange triple glow powder. All right, and this stuff does work. I mean, under a black light, it works really, really nice. And uh, I have a little light here that uh, got a blue and uh, it charges up this stuff so uh, you guys can see it possibly but I didn't charge it up too much but it will it does work so trust me now in this one here I ordered some more of the powder as well this is a kit with just a bunch of different colors inside of it and uh, so it's gonna be interesting so the idea of how to do this, <clears throat> you can use water or you can use rubbing alcohol. I'm probably going to use rubbing alcohol so it'll dry faster on the body. Just have to be careful with how I apply it so I don't get any blotchiness or anything because one side, one part dried a little bit too fast than the other and you overlapped it, you might get some blotchiness. So I'm going to try either with the water or with the alcohol and kind of figure out which one's going to work a little bit better. But what you want to do is use whatever liquid that you have, water, alcohol, that you choose to use. You put your powder in first and then you add a little bit of the pigment to that mixture that you have. Or if you're going to use a powder dye, you add a little bit of the powder dye to it to get kind of what the color of the dye that you want as far as the finish of your guitar or whatever wood you're going to do. If you add the powder to the um, paint itself or to the dye, it changes, okay? You don't get the effect that you're looking for because, because this has an orange color to it. The dyes have an orange color to it. So you want to have more of the powder than you want to have as far as the dye goes. Otherwise, it kind of blondes this out. Now... What I'm thinking about doing with this is the headstock, the back of the neck, and the body all getting this. And what's going to happen is, is that um, under a black light, it's going to show these stripes. But anywhere where it's lighter colored wood, it should have a little bit more of the glowing than the darker stripes have. Now, the headstock logo that I'm thinking about doing, which I put on there, which is still an idea. I'm not too sure if I'm going to do it or not. Um, it's going to get the pigment and the glow powder uh, mixture with a epoxy resin. And that'll be in the cutout that I make for the headstock logo and design on there. And that's not going to have the striping 
that you see on the body of the guitar that will be solid. So I'm hoping that this works out the way I'm thinking it would and uh, everything goes well. So I still have a lot of sanding to do on this thing. I got to knock the burr down off these underneath these frets. So I got a uh, two different fret presses coming. So I know this is kind of a long video. I haven't done that in a while. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of wearing the same shirt I wore yesterday because I thought I was going to be doing some sanding and maybe some possibly routing out of the headstock on this thing to create a logo or something. But timing wasn't on my side today at all. Go figure. And uh, yeah, so I just had enough time to kind of put this video together. And uh, you guys take it easy. Have a good one. And keep rocking.